Well, it's Wednesday, August 24th, 2022, and we're walking down through Isaiah 28, and it's a, it's a rebuking chapter for the sins and the apostasy of the nation of Israel and Judah, and, and I think it is likewise of America today, because this, this scripture is as much for us as it is for any nation on the planet. Now, let me read the first eight verses again. It says, in Isaiah 28, woe to the crown of pride to the drunkards of Ephraim, whose glorious beauty is a fading flower, which is at the head of the verdant valleys to those who are overcome with wine. Behold, the Lord has a mighty and strong one like a tempest of hail and a destroying storm, like a flood of mighty waters overflowing who will bring them down to the earth with his hand. The crown of pride, the drunkards of Ephraim will be trampled underfoot. And the glorious beauty is a fading flower which is at the head of the verdant valley, like the first fruit before the summer, which an observer sees, he eats it up while it is still in his hand. In that day, the Lord of hosts will be for a crown of glory and a diadem of beauty to the remnant of his people, for a spirit of justice to, those, to him who sits in judgment and for strength to those who turn back the battle at the gate. But they also have erred through wine, through intoxicating drink are out of the way. The priest and the prophet have erred through intoxicating drink. They are swallowed up by wine. They are out of the way through intoxicating drink. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment for all tables are full of vomit and filthiness. So no place is clean. Now there are a couple items in this uh, first eight verses we need to examine before we move further down the verses in chapter 28. First, the Lord has a mighty and strong one who's going to execute judgment on Ephraim. The comparison is made in verse two, like a tempest of hail and a destroying storm, like a flood of mighty water overflowing who will bring down to the earth with his hand. <clears throat> We know who this destroying storm is. It's not the rider on the white horse in Revelation. It is a heathen nation called Assyria. And God chooses to use this nation to whom God is unknown to bring judgment on his chosen people. That's enough to think about right there, isn't it? God throughout the pages of the Bible often uses a heathen, ungodly people to bring judgment on his own people. I hope you're translating this. If this happened to Israel, to Judah, and God uses Assyria to do it, who will he use to judge America? You see, the, the heart of the king's in the hand of the Lord. He turns it wherever he wants to, so... He's in control of the nations. You may not believe it, but he uses even heathen nations to bring forth his judgment. And like me, many of you have witnessed the devastation of hail and flood. One particular day, there were a number of leaders of a church I was pastoring gathered at my house out in the country, and we watched golf ball-sized hail and upwards work havoc on about 15 vehicles gathered at my house for a big dinner. And we were watching hail balls bounce 15 feet off the ground in the air, putting uh, some pretty nice sized dents in the metal of those vehicles. And that was a bit unnerving. I've witnessed the flood of the Mississippi River run through buildings in downtown Burlington, Iowa, with devastating businesses and private property. I've witnessed firsthand the destruction water can do on steel structures and buildings with solid foundations. And God prophesied through Isaiah that like a tempest of hail and a destroying storm and like a flood of mighty water overflowing, I'm bringing down my judgment on Ephraim. Judgment's about to happen because of their pride because of the prosperity that led them to think they were something special and they led them into drunkenness. And all that fruit of the fat valleys, think about it, all the prosperity you've had in your life, and some of you are saying, well, I haven't had that much prosperity. You 
have not recognized compared to the world at large how large your prosperity is, how great and grand it is. It all be gone like a fading flower destroyed while it's still in your hand. Now, you can think about this any way you want to, but I'll tell you what, if you put your trust in riches, silver, gold, stocks, bonds, money, uh, it, it could be gone in a nanosecond by a declaration of the United States government that your money's no good and we're confiscating your gold and silver. Don't kid yourself. Don't kid yourself. It's happened before. It's going to happen again. Here is America, the country we love, observing the land so proud of its prosperity, enslaved, if you please, to the pride of its accomplishment, ready to be judged by God for the drunkenness of the land. Yes, I'm saying we have the crown of pride. Rather than being to the praise of the glory of God who has given us freely of his mercy and grace, we have begged on his grace by ignoring his commands and every man doing that which was right in his own eyes. Even those in, in spiritual authority over us have indulged their flesh, sought after greed, propagated false doctrine, taken advantage of the flock of God. And that can lead to one thing, disasters impending upon all of them and us as well as we have not sought the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Do not think for one moment that God will spare America. Once known for its pursuit of God, now a nation devoid of God. Oh, yes, there's a remnant. Yes, there is. Praise God, there's a remnant. Having, having pursued this country, having pursued every lust of the flesh and, and gloried in its process, but in the midst of it, there's a remnant. But this nation as a whole has gone wild. And who will he use? Who will he use to chase in America? No doubt, a heathen nation. A nation that hates and despises us while they themselves are without hope and without God. Count on it. It's a pattern of the scripture. In recent years, I believe we've received warnings that have for the most part been ignored. 9-11 had to be a warning for America. For a brief few weeks, churches were in prayer and opened as houses of prayer and lots of people flocked to those houses of prayer. But that soon passed with the rhetoric of how strong we are then that we are surely going to get those who perpetrated themselves upon us. And we were lulled back to sleep and instead of ushered into repentance and humility before God. And don't blame the sinner or the ungodly as the church stands as a watchman over the gates of this nation and we fell short in our lust for success, glory, and pursuit of recognition. Another warning has to to have been COVID-19 and the violence witnessed across America in the streets of our cities as buildings were destroyed and people did whatever they wanted to do and no one stopped them for the most part. Don't kid yourself, judgment's coming. I think a flood's coming. We're drunk on the pride of our success, the prosperity of our churches and nation and the warnings better be heeded. Disciples of Christ, wake up. The chasing of the Lord, <laughs> which moves us to be the bride of Christ is about to happen. Maybe it's already started because we've not been persecuted like all the rest of the followers of Christ in some of the countries of the world. But unless we repent, woe, disaster, calamity is coming. Father, I repent of my sin in any place of pride in me, break me, break me, humble me. I bring nothing but the blood of Jesus covering my life to present myself before you. For I have no access to the throne of God without the shedding of Christ's blood. There's nothing I've accomplished that I can bring and wave before the throne of God. And I humble myself, say, oh God. If there is any wicked way in me, reveal it. I will confess it. I will turn from it. I want not to disobey. I want rather to please you. Pray that over the disciples of Jesus Christ in this country that we love, the United States of America. Have mercy upon us, O God, and turn us from our sin, our iniquity, and our lawless deeds in the name of Jesus. Amen. I 
called you to pray. 